The top challenges in neuroscience are probably to find better ways to get inside the brain, to see what's happening inside a living brain. Uh, because right now, scientists can really uh, only get indirect measures of what's going on in our heads. And so if we can get instruments that get, get better resolution, can figure out what individual neurons are doing, uh, that's going to really change the way we understand how the mind works. fMRI is a great tool. It's an incredibly powerful tool, and it's changed the way that neuroscientists do their job, and it's changed the way we think about how the mind works. Unfortunately, MRI only uh, gets down to a resolution of about the size of a peppercorn. So they can figure out activity going on within these little peppercorns in the brain. But of course, neurons are much, much smaller than that. There are thousands upon thousands of neurons in that little volume. So what we need are machines that can get down to even smaller scales. I think one of the breakthroughs that we'll have will be the ability to ma manipulate memories. So people will be able to treat the trauma from disturbing memories actually with medications. You'll be able to blunt those effects because scientists are really starting to figure out how memory works in the brain on a chemical level, and they can interfere with it. So that's going to bring, raise a whole bunch of ethical questions. Um, should soldiers take drugs so that they don't develop uh, PTSD? Uh, or should they deal with their experiences that they have, no matter how disturbing they might be? It's, it's a complicated issue. Understanding the brain became important when people realized what the brain is for. And that actually didn't happen until the 1600s. Uh, before the scientific revolution, uh, people sometimes thought that the brain was just a load of phlegm, or maybe it was just there to keep our bodies cool. But once people realized that the brain was where our reasoning and our emotions are generated, where our memories are stored, um, then it became one of the most important things to study in all of science. Uh, of course, it's been a long time uh, for scientists to really start to get a handle on how the brain actually works. So right now, we're, we're, in our, uh, we're going into our fifth century uh, of neuroscience, and we're really only just getting started. I choose what to write about simply by kind of trusting my nose. I mean, I, I will read about a study and just find it really fascinating. Um, it's good if, uh, if a piece of research is potentially very useful and practical in the future, but really ultimately uh, science can be very cool and really stop and make you think about how the world works and make you think in a different way. And that's what I like to write about because that uh, helps me to understand the world. I got interested in science as a kid. Uh, I would read magazines about science when I was young. Um, and when I went to college, I took a few science classes. I was an English major. Uh, and it was kind of a strange experience to be in a class on physics uh, with pre-meds or engineering students. And they would look at me and wonder what this English major was doing there. And I just liked it. Uh, and I didn't actually realize that I might be able to make a living combining my two interests, my interest in writing and science, until a couple of years out of college when I actually got a job at Discover Magazine. <laughs>